Evaluating limits with the greatest integer function can be a bit tricky, so let's do some practice. We'll begin with a few basic examples, and then we'll look at a handful of slightly trickier ones. Let's make sure we know what we're talking about. This is the greatest integer function. Sometimes it's denoted int of x. Sometimes it's called the floor function and denoted floor of x. Sometimes this sort of double bracket notation is used. We're going to use this notation, which is a very traditional floor notation. And what the greatest integer or floor function does is it rounds the input down to the greatest integer less than or equal to the input. And you can see that in this graph here. Everything from 0 to 1 gets rounded down to 0 until we get to 1, at which point it gets rounded down to 1. Everything between 1 and 2 gets rounded down to 1 until we get to 2, where we suddenly jump up to 2. Let's evaluate some of these limits. The limit of the floor of x as x approaches 0 from the left is what? Well, if we're approaching 0 from the left, we're over here. And we can see that immediately to the left of 0, the function is equal to negative 1. So this limit is negative 1. On the other hand, if we approach 0 from the right, we can see immediately to the right of 0, the function is equal to 0. All of those numbers that are a little bit bigger than 0 get rounded down to 0. So this limit is 0. This means the two-sided limit the limit of the floor function, or greatest integer function, as x approaches 0, without regard to side, does not exist, because the one-sided limits, left and right, are different. On the other hand, what about the limit of the greatest integer function as x approaches a non-integer value? As x approaches 1 half, for example, from the left, 1 half is right about there, from the left, we can see that the function is equal to 0. From the right, if we approach 1 half, still the function is equal to 0. Anything near 1 half, whether it's to the left or to the right, is getting rounded down to 0. And so this two-sided limit, the limit of the greatest integer function as x approaches 1 half, does exist, and it's equal to 0. A similar thing will happen with any limit of the greatest integer function as x approaches a non-integer value. If x was approaching 0.9, for example, the limit would still be 0, because whether we're approaching 0.9 from the left or to the right, we're still talking about numbers that are between 0 and 1, and thus they'll get rounded down to 0. Let's do this handful of additional examples. We'll look at a graph of this function, the floor of x divided by x, after evaluating the limits. Let's just consider how to think through these, even if we don't have a graph. The limit of the floor of x divided by x as x approaches 0 from the left is what? In the numerator, the greatest integer function of x, as x approaches 0 from the left, we're going to be plugging in these really small negative numbers. They're approaching 0, but they're to the left of 0. So they're small negative numbers, which will all get rounded down to negative 1. So this numerator would just equal negative 1. The denominator is just x, so clearly it's approaching 0 from the left. Thus, what we really have is negative 1 divided by really small negative numbers. The negatives will cancel out, and thus, this limit will be going to positive infinity. We could also say the limit does not exist, but this is exactly how it doesn't exist. It's going off to positive infinity. Again, that's because the numerator is a finite negative, negative 1, and the denominator is negatives that are getting closer and closer to 0. The negatives cancel out. We have a finite number divided by arbitrarily small numbers. It's going to infinity. Now, if we approach 0 from the right, in the numerator, we'll be plugging in very small positive numbers into the greatest integer function, and those will all be rounded down to 0. The denominator will be approaching 0, but all of those numbers will be positive because we're approaching 0 from the right. So we have the numerator, which equals 0 exactly, 
divided by numbers that are approaching zero and are positive. Thus, this limit equals zero. Thus, the two-sided limit, we can say, does not exist, because from the left, the function's approaching positive infinity, and from the right, it's approaching zero. And here is a graph where we can see that. As we approach zero from the left, the function is going off to positive infinity. And from the right, like we said, it's equal to zero because these numerators are just small positive numbers getting plugged into the greatest integer function. Those are all going to be rounded down exactly to zero. So we just have that flat line. All right, three more basic examples here. We just have to think carefully about how the greatest integer function works. Here, x is approaching 4 from the left, so we have numbers that are close to 4, but they're less than 4, which means the greatest integer function will be rounding all of those down to 3. Thus, this is just going to be 5 times 3, which is 15, minus 3, giving us 12. In the next problem, x is approaching 2 from the right. So when we plug that into the greatest integer function, we're plugging numbers in that are a little bigger than 2. Thus, they'll be rounded down to 2. So we have 2 times x, which is essentially 2 times 2, because x is approaching 2. So that's 4. But then the greatest integer function, that's going to round down to 2 every time. So this is just equal to 4 minus 2, which is 2. Finally, the limit of 2 minus the floor of negative x over 2 as x approaches 1. Let's be careful here. We can't just look at x approaching 1. We'll have to consider the two sides, and then we can make a determination about the two-sided limit. Let's begin with x approaching 1 from the left, so I'll denote that here. We're looking as x approaches 1 from the left. Since x is approaching 1 from the left, these x values will be close to 1, however, they will be less than 1. So this x over 2 will be approaching 1 half. But then it's getting multiplied by a negative. So it's approaching negative 1 half. But then the floor function will round negative 1 half down to negative 1, the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 1 half. So this is 2 minus negative 1, which is going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. That's the left-hand limit. Now, if x is approaching 1 from the right, well, x over 2 will still be 1 half, but then we multiply it by negative, so it's negative half. The greatest integer function rounds that down to negative 1, and again, it's approaching positive 3. So the two-sided limit does, in fact, exist. So you can see whether x is approaching 1 from the left or from the right, when we divide by 2 and then multiply by negative, this input is basically negative half, which the floor function will round down to negative 1. So we get the same limit from the left and from the right. So the two-sided limit is equal to 3. And those are a handful of basic limits with the greatest integer function. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.